Hello and welcome to another TAC tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about bringing an AXF file into Keyshot. Before we do that though, let's take a quick overview of what the TAC and an AXF file actually is. So here at XWrite, we do a lot of different stuff from print to design, automotive, cosmetics, uh, textiles, photography, and filming. So we do a wide variety of things. And what we're going to be talking about today is our TAC and our AXFs. So what exactly is a material? Because that's what an AXF is, is it's actually taking the physical material and bringing it into a digital realm. Now, appearance is more than just color or a picture. The total appearance of something is the color, the texture, the gloss, the transparency, the translucency, just to name a few. So the AXF and through the tax system, we can actually capture all of that data into a single file. So that way we have the most accurate and the most realistic digital format possible. So that way it's almost as if the digital and the physical material that we're working with, they're almost simultaneously the same and they're a twin of one another. So the TAC machine actually has a structured light projector, four industrial grade cameras, 32 white LED point light sources, eight spectral filter wheels, as well as a variable linear light scanner. So all of that is what's making the TAC be able to write and read all of this data from our materials and bring it into a file format that is usable, that's editable, and accessible for not only you as the designer, but also your clients. It's taking all of those materials and all of those maps that you are that the tech machine is taking and putting it into one simple file. So the types of maps that are included in an AXF are the diffuse map, the displacement map, the normal map, the roughness map, and the specular map. You'll see with not only like this particular texture, which is a textile that has all that. So the displacement map is one of the things that we're able to capture. We can also capture a fabric or like in this particular coated leather case, we can actually get the clear coat normals as well as the leather normals off of the texture. We have that ability with the TAC machine and with the AXFs. Something else that we have now that you can use is a free uh, Pantora viewer so that way you can actually look and see at the AXF samples that you have. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into Pantora. You'll see if if you already have an AXF and you need to access it, you can grab it from the browser. So we're going to be using this tutorial underscore blue diamond vinyl. We've been using this with the other tutorial series as well. So if you want a deeper dive, not only in that material, but also in Pantora, go ahead and check out our um, AXF flow tutorial series. But with that, we can go ahead and if this is, is a, if you don't already have an AXF, we can go ahead and load one in by starting uh, the actual whole process here. You're going to want to insert your material into your TAC 7 and go ahead and go to the measurement and processing right up here. You're going to name your material, then you're going to go ahead and go through your processing options. So for this one, it's a textile. It has a little bit of a uh, texture to it, so I'm going to add a displacement map to it. It has just a little bit of gloss, so I'm putting it at a medium gloss. If you're ever unsure of what to do, always go with the higher. So if you're unsure if it's a low or a medium gloss, go with medium. If you're unsure if it's a medium or high, go with high. This does not have transparency. The model format that we're going to use is GGX. You can use either Ward or GGX, depending on what your needs are. And this also has a uniform fresnel, so we're going to click with that. Next, we're going to go ahead and do our pre-scan, already pre-scanned, but you're just going to go ahead and hit the pre-scan button. It's going to take a quick snapshot of your material. And then you're able to take a uh, region of interest here of where you actually want to edit and start using the scan. So I'm doing this nice chunk, depending on what your texture and if you have something that needs to tile, you can select different areas. Obviously, the bigger the area, the bigger the file, and the longer it's going to take to scan. So once you have that, you can go ahead and then determine where you want your uh, measurement data to be, and that will store a folder, as well as where you want to save out the AXF. Once you have that, you can go ahead and hit start, and the TAC will start actually the scanning process. You'll get an estimated time. This is usually pretty accurate. So depending on what you're doing, this will change. 
Once it starts doing that, you'll see that you'll have a process up here where the tack will start and it'll give you a progress bar. Once it's done with that, it'll jump down to post processing where your computer will take over and it will actually start using all of the photos and all of the data that the tax used and start making an AXF. So we have our material down here and then you can go ahead and bring it over into the editor. As you can see, I've already done all of my changes. And if you want a more in-depth guide of what that is, again, reference our other tutorial series. But we, you can see I cropped it in based on what I want our tile to be. So that way we can have a nice seamless tile. So you can do that. You can rotate it as well. Then you can go into the color gradient. So for, for, in for instance, we go into our normals. You can see that it's not 100% uniform. So if I turn off this, you'll be able to see now all of a sudden we can see this definite pattern. So we have a gradient removal tool that is pretty intuitive. Turn that on and now you don't have that. So you're not getting as much as a, a repeat as we were. So you can go ahead and go through that. Next thing we have is a tool to be able to make the uh, material seamless. And all of this is happening across all of our different maps simultaneously. So for this one, we're going with our min cut option because we actually have a specific uh, pattern going on here. So you can do that, save it out, and then you can actually go over to the viewer and you can view what this will look like in 3D space. So as you can see here, you can't see a, really any edges or any abnormalities going on with our map. So we know we did a good job of tiling. So when you have your AXF ready to go and you have Keyshot up and running, it's very easy to bring in an AXF file into our uh, into our scene here inside of Keyshot. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply double click on the on the object that we want it to be the AXF to be applied to. So I double clicked on that. It brought up into our material right here and the type we go to measured. And then we go ahead and open up our file that we want to reference. And we have tutorial underscore blue diamond vinyl AXF. So we're going to go ahead and open that. Double click to open that. And just like that, we have all of this loaded in and ready to go. So you can see our material is up and in there. So if we go over to our properties, we can also change so we can move it around. We can, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and brighten it up a little bit just so that way you guys can see it, as well as you can increase the scaling of it here so that way we can get a little bit of a better look. So just like that, we have our AXF that we scanned and we edited and we have now successfully been able to bring it right into Keyshot. So hopefully that answers all your questions that you need to know to bring over an AXF into Keyshot. If you have other questions, feel free to check out our other tutorials. Hopefully we'll be able to answer them. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see you on the next video.